All right, guys, this is the second video on uh, function. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about range and domain um, because you might be asked to find things like that. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can look at this just to make sure that you're thinking about it in the right way. So here's my function. And these numbers that they're giving us here, that's the domain they've given us. So I'll just write this as the domain. Okay, that's the domain. Now, what the domain means is that these are the x values that you're going to plug into here to then find out what answers you get. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in sort of like this. So this is my uh, domain. Uh, in my domain, I will have the values 1, 0, 1, and 2. And over here, I'm going to have my f of x, which will then tell me what the range of this function is. So because the question has asked us to find the range of f of x. And if you remember from the first video, we're going to map them over. And what causes the mapping is this, or in other words, the function machine. You put minus 1 in, this happens to it, and then it churns out an answer at the end. All right, so let's let's get let's get cracking with it. Now, once I put minus one in here, what I'm actually doing now, I'm going to jump through some hoops. You need to watch the first video that I've done on functions to know what I'm doing. I'm just going to do it once just to help you out a little bit. When I put minus one in, I'm actually finding f of minus one, which means that wherever there's x, I'm going to change it for minus one. So that becomes minus one square plus one. So what I'm actually doing is replacing this x with minus 1, and because the x was squared, I will square it, okay? So this now gives me 1 plus 1, which gives me 2. So that tells me that my first value there, minus 1, is mapped onto 2. When I plug the 0 in, 0 will be mapped onto 1. So I'll just put the little mapping there. And then when I put the 1 in, I'm going to get 2 again. So that's going to be mapped onto 2. And then when I put 2 in, that's going to give me 5. So that's going to be mapped onto 5. Okay. So it basically tells me that my range of this function for the domain that I have been given would be 1, 2, and 5. And that is the end of that. I don't need to, probably should put this in a little bit of curly brackets there. So that's my range there. Two appears twice. I don't need to write it twice. I just need to write it just the one time. So one, two, and five, and that is my range of my function. Now, it, they might show it to you in a different way. It could look like this, where they said, um, F, well, I've, I've covered this in my first video as well, so you might want to have a quick look at that. But this is basically the same as saying um, F of X is equal to 4X minus 3. Okay, it's the same as saying that. It's nothing strange about that. But sometimes they write it like this. It says F maps X onto um, that function there. So anyway, they've given me the domain like this. And what that basically means is x for my domain is all the values from 1 up until 3. It does not include 4. It's equal to 1 because it's x is greater than or equal to 1, but it is less than 4, so you must stop at 3. So the values that I'm going to have in my domain this time is, um, are, I should say, 1, 2, and 3. Those are the values I'm going to have. And then I'm going to find my f of x, which will help me to determine my range. Now, to get my range here, I can literally just plug the values in as I've done before. If you want, pause the video and see if you can get the answers that I'm going to get. Okay, so did you get those answers there? So 1 maps on to 1. 2 maps on to 5, and 3 maps on to 9. 
So it means, therefore, that my range would be 1, 5, and 9. Okay? And that's all there is to that. Now, um, yeah, so we just list the elements of the range, and that's basically all they wanted us to do. Now, this is the extreme side of um, domain and, well, this is just the domain we'll focus on for these questions. Sometimes your functions look like what you've got here. And they might say, find out what values or what, your, what can your domain be. Or they might say, what values do you have to exclude from your domain? I'm going to look at both of them here. The first thing to begin with, if you have a fraction, which is what you've got here, the things that you can't have, you're not allowed to have zero as your denominator. You're not allowed to have zero as your, your denominator because any number, say one over zero, um, goes to infinity. Anything you divide by zero becomes undefined. So you're not allowed to have zero in your denominator. Now when you look at this, what would make this become zero? Well, if this x was actually a 3, then 3 take away 3 becomes zero and then this function becomes undefined. So in this case, x cannot be equal to 3. It can be any other number you want, but it can't be 3. Okay, so that's one rule. The next thing that you need to focus on is what happens with this, um, this function with g here. You've got a square root. And if you can guess it, what value you're not allowed to have in a square root, a square root can't have negative numbers in it. Now, if you decide to go and do a little bit of further maths later on, you'll find out that it can we call them imaginary numbers but for the sake of this you can't have negative numbers inside of a square root okay so a square root can have zero because the square root of zero is zero but you want to make sure that all of these values in here are positive now what would make this become negative well let's play around with it and see for it to become negative 2x minus 1 has to be less than 0. Now, any number less than 0 is a negative number. Okay? So, what we'll do, we'll just work it out as normal, like a normal inequality. If I bring that 1 over there, I'm going to have 2x is less than positive 1. And now, I just divide by 2, and I get my answer that x, um, x cannot be less than a half. Okay, if x turns out to be less than a half, then we have a problem. Anything below a half is going to cause a problem. Okay, so because you're going to end up getting negative numbers in there. It can be a half if you want it to be, because if it turns out to be a half, then this will work out to be zero. And the square root of zero does exist. It's zero. Okay, but it can't be less than a half. Any number below that will cause it to be negative. All right, so those are a couple of rules that you need to pay attention to, what you can include. So what I'd like you to do then is look at a few examples to see if you can try them on your own. Okay, so here we've got four examples um, for you to have a look at. And let's see how you do. Pause the video. Have a go, take as much time as you like, and then once you finish, um, pop back to then see my solutions. All right, let's take a look first of all at this one here. Now, because it's a fraction, the bottom cannot be equal to zero. If once it gets to zero, we're going to have a problem. It goes to infinity. So, what values of x can it not take so that it turns to zero? So if I've got 2x plus 1 and I put it equal to zero, it will tell me what value x has to take before it turns to zero. 
So I'll get 2x is equal to minus 1. All we're doing is just a little bit of arithmetic. Just move the 1 over. It becomes minus. Now I need to divide by 2. Um, and x is going to be minus a half. So basically, x cannot be equal to minus a half because if it's equal to minus a half, what will happen is you'll get zero in the denominator and this goes to infinity, but x can take whatever value. So the domain for this function um, is any value of x except minus a half. Here we have another one. So let's find out what x value it cannot have before it goes to zero. Same sort of thing. Just focus your attention on the denominator. Uh, we get 2x plus 4 is equal to zero. And 2x is equal to minus 4. x is equal to minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2. So x cannot be equal to minus 2 because if it turns out to be minus 2, what will happen is you will end up with a minus 2, at, you'll end up with 0 at the bottom here, which will make this function undefined. So the domain of this function is any value of x except minus 2. Okay, down here now, we've got square roots. And remember, inside a square root, you can't have a negative number. So negative number is any number less than 0. So we need to find out what values of x could we not have to, um, in order that we get a negative number. So we work everything as normal again. What I'm going to do is I am going to bring that 3 over. So this becomes minus 4x is less than minus 3. When the 3 goes over, it becomes minus. And now to get rid of this minus 4, I have to divide by minus 4. So I'll get x is greater than minus 3 over minus 4. x is greater than 3 quarters. Now, you might notice that here I flip the sign around. If you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality sign gets flipped around. Now... Now that I've said that, you might be wondering, well, how did that happen? Um, for this one, before I, I'm not going to go into much detail, just check out my video on inequalities and you're going to see how that really happens. But yeah, x can't be any number that's bigger than three quarters because any number that is bigger than three quarters will turn this whole thing into a negative number and you can't square the negative number. So the domain for this function is that x can take any number except numbers bigger than 3 quarters. So I just put a line through that to say it can't be any number bigger than 3 quarters. All right, and the last one for us to stop then is again 7 plus x. Um, let's undo that. 7 plus x over 3. It can't be less than 0, otherwise it goes negative. Let's see what value of x we'll need to exclude from this one. So same sort of routine, move the 7 over. So x over 3 is less than 7. And last of all, to get rid of this 3, we multiply throughout by 3. So x is less than 7 times 3. So x is less than 21. If we get any value of x that's less than 21, it will turn this whole thing negative in here, and you can't square it to negative numbers, so then x, I'll put a line through this now, can't be any number that is less than 21. All right, guys, so I hope you understand and learned a little bit more about functions, particularly about domain and range. Um, don't forget, like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with new videos that I put online. All right. Thank you.